Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday Conversation. We're on the top of a parking deck in Midtown Columbus at Piedmont Columbus Regional's Midtown Campus. We're with Scott Hill. Scott's the CEO or Regional Vice President of Piedmont. The, obviously, they have a lot of hospitals across Georgia, but yeah. Scott, you're in charge of what's here in Columbus. Welcome. Thanks. Good to be with you, Chuck. Been a while. It, it, you know, it really has. You and I became pretty close. We did a lot of conversations during COVID, didn't we? We have, yeah. COVID was an interesting time, so I'm um, glad we're kind of past that. Still a lot of sick people, though, that need care, and we're working hard every day. And it, it really seems like that. One of the reasons we're here is you broke some news earlier this week. Y'all announced a major construction project yes. here on, at the Piedmont Midtown Campus. That building that's directly behind you right there is about to become, part of it's about to become a construction zone. What's going on? So, um, as you know, we are just really pleased with the uh, the construction that's going on around the Bill and Olivia Amos Children's Hospital. We're just thrilled with that. And that project um, that we're doing with the old doctor's hospital has really, is really enabling an enabling project for us to create a new care environment with our ICUs and so um, when the children move out of the fifth floor of the hospital and down into doctor's hospital following that construct that, that the old doctor's hospital um, following the the construction um, and we open up the Bill and Olivia Amos Children's Hospital we are going to take the fifth floor of our hospital and renovate it um, and we're going to move uh, a, some patient care units into that some adult patient care units into that um, and then we're actually going to build a new seventh floor on our smaller stack of our two of our two towers um, and build a brand new seventh floor and the sixth and the seventh floor of what we call the East Tower. Six East and seven East will become a brand new 43 bed state of the art ICU. So um, we provide a lot of ICU care in this community uh, through our trauma program and just through the, the intensity of the, the patients that we get. And um, our care environment um, is from when the tower was originally built in the early 80s. And so um, we're real excited to be able to build a brand new ICU to serve our community. The rooms will be about two and a half times bigger than the current rooms. And probably more updated equipment. Oh, it'll be state of the art. Um, absolutely. What's the cost of that project going to be? Well, the cost of the total project here on this campus is a little just a little north of eighty million dollars. So um, we're looking at about the a, a, around fifty, a little bit north of fifty million dollars for the ICU project. And then the other 30 is on the doctor's right, hospital, right, yeah. children's hospital piece. That's right. As you do this, as you invest $80 million in this Midtown campus, why? What's the reason for investing that money? Well, for us, um, as you know, we joined Piedmont about six years ago, and they committed uh, to spend some money in this community um, over the course of our relationship, the beginning part of our relationship, and they've done so much already. Um, and, and throughout the, the course of this relationship with this capital commitment, we have been really carefully planning around our bricks and mortar. Okay, and so we came up with the plan for the Children's Hospital, the Bill and Olivia Amos Children's Hospital, and the ICU project. Um, and for us, we wanted to be really wise with the money, um, and we felt like adding on to the to the existing building here um, on the Midtown campus was a really good move for us, um, and to to really free up some different spaces um, and to go back into the tower that's been in existence for a long time, you know, since the early '80s, and so really, you're talking about a 40-year-old tower. Yeah, it's, it, it is a 40-year-old tower. And so it's time for some refresh. We've done a great job taking care of it over the years. Um, but this new ICU is going to be something special for our community, no doubt. As you make these investments, Scott, what is going to happen to people that you're still going to be treating people in the ER? You're still sure. going to be treating people on the floors in this hospital. Right. What are the inconveniences and what are y'all doing to mitigate as much of that as you can? So right now we have um, about four ICUs that are spread throughout the building, yeah. right? And so this project will enable us to get really all of our ICU care into two spaces. Um, and we'll be able to segment some geography within the 43 beds to dedicate like to our trauma program, right? We'll have a trauma ICU. We've always had that and we'll continue to have that, but it'll enable us to have a different level of efficiency having all that care take place in, in one setting. Uh, a lot easier for the doctors and the nurses, instead of having to go from floor to floor, physicians are kind of, you know, going here and there, uh, 
they'll be able to just stay in their units very efficiently and, and work from kind of one floor to the next. Was this a hard sell? Piedmont's obviously a statewide, yeah. what, 16 hospitals? 19 hospitals. 19 hospitals, 19 hospitals to Athens, yeah. to Atlanta, to Rome. And Augusta. State, Augusta now. As a statewide hospital system, was this a hard sell to Kevin Brown and the people that are in charge? Not, not at all. Um, not, not in any way. Kevin um, has been incredibly supportive of this entire team and this community. Um, they were looking forward. That's a reason why they made the capital commitment to begin with um, to, to investing in the Columbus community. It's a, it's a community that they wanted to be in. Um, and the partnership has been a great fit for us over the last six years. Um, really, they've, they've kind of put their foot on the accelerator of all the things we've wanted to do here for a long time. And so uh, this project made, made very good sense, and, and, uh, and Kevin viewed it that way also. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I would not at all use the word harcel. I think it was, um, if anything, it was like, yeah, this is great work. Let's get this done. As somebody who's driving the car, it's kind of nice to have somebody that's putting the gas in it and, and encouraging you to push that accelerator. Yeah, right? Piedmont's been a great partner, and that's what we expected going in, Chuck. I mean, um, we, we went through a really careful process. It took almost two years, um, and Piedmont came out on top of that process for a lot of reasons. Um, and I think you're seeing the fruits of that today with what's going on here, the investment into quality care for patients that we've made um, across both organizations, the expansion of the ER out at Northside, um, you know, this project on the Midtown campus. And, and we're actually in the, the planning process for a project out on the north end of town eventually. I want to talk about that, Scott, in just a minute, but we've got to take a quick break. You're watching the Sunday Conversation. After this word, I hope you come back and join us. We're going to have more from Scott Hill. He is the CEO, Regional Vice President here at Piedmont Columbus. Welcome back to the Sunday Conversation. We're on a parking deck in Midtown Columbus on a beautiful spring day. I'm with Scott Hill. Scott is in charge of the Piedmont operations here in Columbus, including the Midtown campus and the North Columbus campus uh, up off of Veterans Parkway. Um, Scott, we were just talking about what was going on in, as a whole in Columbus. Sure. We've obviously talked about the construction project here. Tell me a little bit more about what you're what you're looking at short term and long term yeah. with the north side sure. hospital. And, and you know, in the short term, we're, we're intently focused on the, the new uh, Bill and Olivia Amos Children's Hospital. When will um, that open? And uh, we, we'll, we'll move the kids down in the fall. Um, out of the main tower into the new hospital space. And if you look out there, you can maybe get a, a picture of it. You can see the connector is being built, which was a critical aspect of, of this project on the Midtown campus, really going to transform this campus. And that's our short-term focus because it's active. Um, probably here in a couple weeks, there'll be a crane up on this campus. So you'll, you'll definitely see the activity around the ICU project. So without going outside, you can go from the buildings directly behind you all the way to the yeah, old that's right. hospital. That's right. As part of okay. this overall campus project. That's a big deal. Yeah, and then the new ICUs, obviously, um, it's a great project for us and look forward to getting that stood up and, and opened up. And, and we're, we're kind of in the beginning stages, architectural planning, just for the growth of the Northside campus. Um, it's a hospital that was originally built to be a single specialty type hospital. Orthopedics. Um, orthopedics, great legacy. Um, but we've grown over the years with the e adding an ER, expanding the ER. 
um, and really establishing a, a new community hospital on the north end of town, which was always our goal for Northside. So will it grow? It will grow. It will grow. We we are what I would tell you just a little crammed in out there. I think when like like I said, the hospital was originally built for kind of a singular purpose. Yeah. Now it's more you know it's it's being used to do a lot of different things, and so um, we're we we squeeze in certain areas, and it's time to kind of spread our wings a little bit out there. And that's what that planning is about. It's been such a, a great growth uh, story for our community, for Piedmont, Columbus Regional, um, and ultimately at the at the end of the day, that planning is that that's what that's going to look at. We're now clear of COVID. You and I had a lot of discussions. Well, there's still COVID, but, but yes. we're clear we're of the crisis technically. that co the crisis <laughs> that COVID brought. What did this organization and healthcare organizations in general learn coming out of COVID? And is that part of the reason we're seeing what we're seeing? Well, I think one of the, we learned a lot, obviously, in the in the care of patients. When you look at the beginning of COVID um, and what that did, we in many ways didn't know what was going on. We figured that out pretty quick. That's what healthcare people do. The long term lessons, I think, um, over the course of you know a two to four, two to three year period of time. One of the big lessons we learned was that kids need their own space. And that's why we thought about what, what, what are the steps we can take to put our assets to full use on this campus. Um, and fortunately, you know, with, uh, with the Cheese family coming forward and, and, and wanting to really help us lift the Children's Hospital off the ground, can't say enough about how wonderful they've been. It just kind of fell into place for us because we really wanted to create a different environment for the, the care of children in this region. One of the things that you hear in all industries, but particularly in healthcare, there is a worker crisis. There are still there's a worker yeah. shortage. How, as you're standing this up and you're about to open the Children's Hospital over here, are you concerned about worker shortage? Are you worried about getting the clinical the doctors, the nurses, yeah. the clinical side, as well as the support side. Well, I'm, I, I'm not, and I'm going to tell you why. I think that you know Piedmont's a great place to work. I think people see that every day. Um, we're still kind of coming out of the COVID staffing shortage. That's very real, but we've made a lot of progress over the last year to 18 months. Um, and Columbus has a great story to tell. We, we've had a number of physician recruits in recently um, where we've been talking to them about Columbus and, and being a, a member of this community and coming here to put down roots. And so um, we're, we're staffed well here at the hospital. We're going to continue to improve upon that and add the physicians we need to add to, to continue to be successful. Is the Mercer Medical School helping that? Uh, we're excited about Mercer and, and working with them in, in many ways. We have a lot of their students rotating through our facilities now. Um, we're, uh, we've done a joint program with them to start a pediatric surgery program here. Dr. Nakayama, who's their dean, is also on our medical staff as a pediatric surgeon. And so that's a joint partnership with Mercer. That, that's helpful to y'all. Oh, it's been wonderful. It really has been. And we're having more conversations. Had a meeting with Dr. Nakayama last week as the dean, not as the surgeon surgeon, but as the dean, to talk about how else we can grow in conjunction with Mercer over the course of the next few years. Scott, really appreciate the time. We're getting near the end of this. Is there anything I haven't touched on that you think is important that people need to know? No, I think that, you know, again, um, I would just ask the folks maybe listening to this, if, if you come to the, the Midtown campus, particularly the, the, the Piedmont Columbus Midtown Hospital, over the next, you know, 18 to 24 months, bear with us. It's a work in progress. There'll be a big crane out front. Um, you may have to use a different entrance, and we're really, we're really sensitive to the impact it has on our patients and our visitors. And so uh, just, just work closely with us. The end product's going to be something special. You seem pretty confident about that. I'm fired up about it. Last question, I'm gonna spin and do something to you you probably don't want me to do, but you're a huge Auburn fan. I am. How far are the Tigers gonna go in the NCAA basketball tournament? Uh, sweet 16 or better. Or better. Or better. Depends on if they keep sharing the ball and, and, and making good shots. You know, fast, you know, teamwork's important in everything. You see it with this it Auburn is, basketball yeah. team. These guys play well together. They do. They're they're unselfish. What lesson can you learn from that as a health? Can well, people, we have to be in healthcare. We have to be unselfish, right? We yeah. we all have to come together to, to to you know to really focus on the patient and put them at the center of everything we do because we don't really come to work for ourselves. We come to work for them. 
No question.